You know, I think it's time I finally got really honest with you guys. I'm gonna share with you guys right now the three biggest trigger foods that I've been hiding from you guys for a very long time. Number one, fish. Number two, pastured eggs. And number three, butter. Not. Actually, these three eczema trigger foods are my staple foods, and for an overwhelming percentage of my clients, these eczema trigger foods work really, really well. I share this not to confuse you, but to let you know that most of the common advice out there about eczema trigger foods is dead wrong, and you have to find out what personally works for you. What's up, my friends? Welcome to another video. I'm Rob Stewart, I'm here to help you get your skin and your overall health back on track. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my personal skin health trigger foods. Many of you guys have been hitting me up in the comment section, sending me DMs and emails asking me, Rob, what are your specific eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, rosacea, because we know you had them all, trigger foods specifically, specifically, specifically. And here's the thing, some of these trigger foods might sound a little strange to you, but the thing is, is that these are my personal trigger foods, but many of my clients share the same trigger foods, so maybe you do too. So major trigger food, number one for me personally, is things like jalapenos, cayenne peppers, paprika, spicy salsa, sriracha, basically anything hot, anything spicy. It basically kills my digestion. It makes me really have that nasty, horrible, burning, hot, smoking, smelly number two the next day which is not a good sign. Really, any food that makes you feel hot and spicy down your intestines and in your throat and in your mouth and that leaves you with that hot booty the next day, probably not a good food for you personally. Number two, coffee, cacao, black tea, herba mate, basically any of your dark colored caffeinated Beverages. No, 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 no. Everyone knows that coffee and cacao are antioxidant rich. My doctor said so. Dr. Oz says so. Even Oprah Winfrey knows this. Many trigger foods are antioxidant rich. They're never going to heal your skin. Generally, what I notice these do to me is they do not allow the biomarkers of digestion, mood, hormones, and balanced energy to be sustained. All of these drinks really mess with those biomarkers, which are extremely important. Your immune and hormonal biomarkers really are showing you exactly where your skin is going. Number three, and this one is obviously a personal trigger food, but I still have not found a client that can handle seed oils. Seed oils like cottonseed oil, like soybean oil, granola oil, corn oil, just all of the crappy oils they use in processed foods and at restaurants, it's cheap, it's ultra inflammatory, it does destroy your gut biome and it does not stand up to being heated up and cooked. It goes rancid, it's toxic. Number four, and I tried everything especially when I was vegan, under the sun, soaking, sprouting, sourcing them from the right people, raw, from here, from there, but nuts, nut butters, seeds, and seed butters destroy my skin health and my biomarkers. The only one that is remotely okay for me is chia seeds. People ask me all the time, Rob, isn't flaxseed just like the most best thing for inflammation and to get omegas and to heal your gut biome? And it's like, absolutely not. None of my clients thrive on flax. Flax absolutely destroys my digestion and gut health. Come on, bro, give me a break. All of your foods are plant foods that are trigger foods. What are you, some kind of vegan hater? Oh, I don't hate vegans. I don't hate any groups of humans. I'm just reporting to you guys the data. And yes, it is a very interesting fact that all of the trigger foods for me personally and for most of my clients are plant foods. It's not too hard to understand though because plants all live on a toxicity scale. They all have a defense mechanism to stay alive. That defense mechanism doesn't play well with people with autoimmune diseases. And number five, in large amounts, I don't do good with any plant fats, including avocados. I can have an avocado here and there and it tastes really good, but if I do more than like half an avocado in a day, I'm pretty messed up. This goes for every plant fat. I struggle immensely with too much 
fats from plants. I'm talking olives and olive oil. I'm talking coconut oil and coconut meat. If I have too much of any plant fats, my body doesn't assimilate or digest them well. Animal fats, probably because they have the same nutritional makeup as our own cells, cholesterol, saturated fat, branched chain amino acids that are in their complete form. Our body has an easy time digesting and assimilating those nutrients and I do awesome on those. Pretty much all plant fats kind of mess me up. Number six, and this one might really surprise you, but if I have too much salad, and I'm talking your basic iceberg, romaine, green leaf, red leaf, I get absolutely destroyed. I wish I could eat giant salads every day because I actually really love the taste of salads. Whoa, 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 whoa. Salad now? Give me a freaking break. Salad? Come on, how could a salad mess you up? Here's how to know if a salad will do you good or not. If you eat a big salad and the next day you are pooping a salad right out of your butt again, it's like lettuce -y and nothing's digested, nothing is in poop form you know that salad really wrecked your body. I'm kind of putting these into no, one group. They, they aren't one group, so it's actually two, so I'm giving you a, somewhat of a bonus here. But all carciferous vegetables, kale, spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, those bad boys really are one of the biggest hidden trigger foods for my clients, but also for me. I used to drink kale smoothies and spinach smoothies back in the day like they were going out of style. And I can remember several times under the tutelage of some raw vegan YouTubers was getting immensely sick and immensely emaciated and they just said, oh, don't worry, that's the kale working its magic. <laughs> Number seven, the nightshade that messes me up is eggplant, period. Number eight, all beans at this point just wreck my situation and again, there's a really basic way to understand if a food agrees with you or not. If you eat it several times and every single time you eat it and test it, you get bloated, you get gassy, you get uncomfortable, and the next day your poops are all over the place and kind of messy, maybe a little extra stinky, that's not a food that works for you. Beans, they do that to me like crazy. Beans are not my friend, they turn me into a trumpet act. <laughs> so during my vegan days, I really wanted to be a bread eater. And what I found, surprisingly, is that the more basic the bread, the easier it was for me to handle, but these whole grain, nuts and seeds, breads, they were a huge trigger for me. Obviously, the grains and the nuts and the seeds and the undigestible fiber, looking back, I'm like, no, duh. But early on, I thought I was being healthy by doing whole grains. Now, I don't really eat grains at all in any way, shape, or form anymore, but whole grain bread back in the day, man, it messed me up so hard, but I loved it. I couldn't stop eating it. Do you guys have food addictions like that, that you know it messes you up, but for some reason you just cannot stop yourself from eating that food? Okay, so a little public service announcement. Remember that obviously these are some of my trigger foods in healing your body. You have to customize your diet, which means you have to figure out your trigger foods and get rid of them. But besides your diet, there are other triggers. There are environmental triggers, and there are triggers that come from your own inner environment from anxiety, stress, depression. It is ultra important to figure out and eliminate and balance the environmental and stress-related inner toxins that are happening as well. At number 10, azúcar, sugar. Sugar, 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 sugar. Man, sugar from fruit in small amounts, I do great on that. But any type of pure carbohydrate to my diet in large amounts, really does not do me well. It causes inflammation, it causes brain fog, it causes all sorts of things I never knew sugar really did until I took it out of my diet for three years. Boom, what a freaking crazy difference that made. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me today. Thanks so much for watching the video. Remember to leave all your comments and questions down below. Subscribe, hit that like button if you enjoyed the content. For those of you who are looking to get supported through the process of healing your skin and you're looking for coaching, there is a link for a consultation and online coaching with me in the description box. You can also find a link for the three phases workbook, which is my step-by-step -step guide for naturally healing the skin through cleansing, detox, a customized diet, and lifestyle. Also down below is a link for Scanessa, which is by far the world's finest 
probiotic focused for skin health. I take it every day, my clients thrive on it. Pick yourself up some today. All right, my friends, I'll be back with many more videos really soon. Peace.